Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's answer the question, what is the probability distribution? Going back a little, remember that we had a wave equation that represented something about a particle. The example we used was this example, and it was for a particle of mass m in one dimension. We realize that that function is a complex valued function, therefore it cannot represent a real thing, and it doesn't. It does, however, have two real variables, x and t. Now, we can say that it represents, and we're talking about the wave function, the wave function represents the probability density amplitude, also known as the probability amplitude. So the value of the function, even though it's, a, it's an imaginary number, but the magnitude of that number does reflect to some extent there's a relationship between that and eventually the probability of finding a particle in a particular place. So there's a relationship there, even though it doesn't exactly mean that. So we do recognize that if the amplitude, the magnitude of that function is large, it somehow will fit into the concept of a higher probability of finding the particle, and if the probability amplitude is low, that it usually points to a lower probability of finding the particle, but there's not yet that direct connection. How do we get that direct connection? To do that, we have to multiply the wave function by its complex conjugate. What does that mean? What's a complex conjugate? Well, you take an imaginary number and you change the sign of the imaginary part. So you have a real part and an imaginary part. If you change the sign of the imaginary part, you take in the complex conjugate of that imaginary number. In other words, you take your i and replace it by a negative i, or you take the negative i and replace it by a positive i. When you do that, when you multiply the wave function by its complex conjugate, you get this. You get the magnitude, without the complex portion of it, of that function, of that wave function squared, and that is known as the probability distribution. So now we have a closer connection to the probability of finding a particle. We multiply the wave function by its complex conjugate because that allows us to get rid of the imaginary part of the number and only retain the magnitude of that number. Basically, when you think of it this way, if you have a real part and an imaginary part, somehow you want to find the amplitude of that, you have to get rid of this imaginary part and you only want to consider the magnitude of the amplitude of the function. That's really what we're doing when we're taking the complex conjugate. So what we then get is we get the probability distribution sometimes also known as the probability density. Now there's a relationship between the likelihood of finding a particle in a certain place and this particular product. We can write that product as the probability density function or the probability distribution function. So we use the p for that. It is a function of x and t and it's equal to the product of the wave function and its complex conjugate. What does it represent? It represents the relative, and that's important, not the actual probability, but the relative probability that a particle can be found at a particular location compared to at a different location. For example, I have a graph here that explains here is a, what we would call a probability density function, which is really the product of the wave function and its complex conjugate. And notice that if the amplitude is high, it's more likely you'll find the particle at that location. Remember here that the bottom axis here, the horizontal axis, is the position axis. The vertical axis is the probability distribution or probability density function. And you can see that if the amplitude is high, you're more likely to find the particle there. If it's low, you're less likely to find the particle there. But it's a relative number. It's not an absolute number. You can't say, oh, it's 10%, 5%. You don't know yet, it's simply relative. The higher the amplitude, the more likely. The lower amplitude, the less likely. So how do we get the actual probability function? To do that, we're going to have to, what we call, normalize the function. Realize that the relative probability function, or the probability distribution function, or the probability density function, however you want to call it, it does not give you the actual probability. We're not there yet. 
we have to normalize. The probability distribution must be normalized and that we're going to show you in the next video. Finally, we then will have a connection between the Schrodinger equation, the wave equation representing something about a particle that satisfied the Schrodinger equation and how to use the wave equation to actually come up with what we can get out of the information which is the probability of finding the particle at a particular location. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that in the next video. Am I getting a little too excited here? <laughs>